Hi everybody, welcome to the back office teardown lab. While servicing some Joy-Cons, and because they had some drift in their little joysticks here, um, I bought some aftermarket joysticks and that's what I'm swapping in, and it seems to do the trick. And you can see here's one that I took the opportunity to reshell in a rather nice Super Nintendo theme, and it's doing the job. However, I did think, well, rather than using aftermarket parts, why don't we just have a quick look at the Nintendo part that's fitted as per standard and see if there's any way we can actually clean and service that up. So I'm just going to put these aside. You can see you end up with lots of bits and pieces when you do this sort of thing. So just keep all of those. Lots of nice spares for future use. Um, but here's the actual unit itself, and it's quite snazzy. I would like, by the way, if you're watching and you do know what the name of that small connector is that this fits into, please uh, answer down below because I kind of think it would be handy. We can use this joystick in our own project because it's a nice flat base. You can screw it into your PCB with just a few you know, machine screws or whatever, and then just attach this little ribbon, and I'm pretty sure when we go in there, you will have two potentiometers and a clicky button. So you can see that the case is held on by a few clips here. So you've got one on that side and one on the other but with three lugs. So I'm just going to gingerly probe my way around it. We've got nothing to lose. I've already got spares. So the, these literally are very spare. Oh, actually there are clips that wrap around. That's where it could be a little bit tricky. So we just definitely have to be a bit more cautious with that. In fact, just before I do go into that, just have a look at this one. This does seem to be a different one. Again, I'm not, I don't think it's aftermarket. I think it's original, but definitely a different style. So they do have different variations and different suppliers. So some might be easier to get into than others. However, let's not let that deter us. I'm just going to go around and just peel the can ever so gently. So you don't want to over stretch these things, otherwise it will lose its spring. So when we come to put it back together, that will give us some difficulties. But I'm just working my way around, loosening it. This looks like the trickiest one here, of course, because it's in a little recess. So we're going to have to have a little dig around. But we might discover, after taking this apart, that there might be ways to clean this and clean out the, the drift issue without having to dismantle them fully in the future. So I'm willing to sacrifice one in the uh, name of education. As you can see, I'm being quite aggressive now, now that I've decided that I'm not too bothered about assembling it. Though I'm pretty confident we will be able to, but you know, just throwing caution into the wind. Almost there. Just putting up a tiny bit of a fire. Oh, there you go. So you can see it has started to really come apart. Now that flat PCB appears to be going in right into the bottom layer. And there's a big old spring. <laughs> That's why it was wrapped over the edges. So before I do anything, I'm going to see if I can get that PCB back down. Just so it doesn't catch as we pull the lid further off. And yeah, there we go. brilliant. <laughs> so let's try to just take this out. So the spring would go in first, so you need to just be aware of the order. Certainly the spring goes in first. I think this ring was probably under the spring. So just to show you, it would be something, oh, spring's so hard to grab. Something like that. And this bar was in there. So when you move it around, it would be engaging with these wipers. So these are basically is exactly as we thought, potentiometer. And you can see <laughs> it doesn't really want to work like this. But as you move up and down, you're moving these wipers up and down. And of course, these are the arms on the potentiometer, which I'm going to show you right now. The other half is this PCB. And what you're doing, you can see you're moving it up and down here, and there's that button when you click. And you push down and it makes a nice click. That's the button. I think it's being clicked from here. Yeah, this this is the pivot point. And it's clicking on there. So that's the button. So let's put this aside. Yeah, we can see it's going to be a bit of a pain to put back together. But the reason you get drift is that gunk gets into here. And you've got to bear in mind, I've never had this open. Yeah. 
But if you look under the camera, that is dull. I can see greasy goo on here. It's not very clean at all. And it's relying on these carbon contacts to really give you all of that travel in the, the units. So I'd be very cautious on how I clean it, but it definitely does need cleaning. So just going to have a quick look around and see what I've got here. I've got a little bit of flux cleaner, PCB cleaner, which probably isn't quite right. and It's lost its gas, so I had to put a hole in it. But let's see if we can get one drip. We only need a bit of a drip out of the tin. No drips in that tin. A little bit of IPA. How about that instead? So for me, may work, may not. Let's be cautious. I'm going to put a dab of IPA on my finger and just literally very gingerly rub it on there. I can feel that little grease coming off there. And I'm just going to get a bit of the old blue paper and give it a quick once over. And that I think is doing it. I can see already nice and shiny, nice and clean. Which leads us to the bit I was trying to avoid of course which is the dreaded reassembly. But we'll see if we can do it. So Let's get that joystick trigger button back in place. Now this really is something you're going to need some tweezers for. And even with tweezers you can see it's incredibly fiddly. And let's try without. Might be possible. If you've got small, small fingers. Yeah, you definitely need small fingers to try that. Mwah. Really is a pain. Got it. So we pop that in there. Let's just look here. You need to have all of these aligned up nicely. Those effectively are your your wipers, and it's all your sort of joystick dead zone. Everything there, marked out by those. We've already got that metal washer in place, so we can pop that spring in. And then we're going to really need to figure out how to compress everything to get that lid on whilst we get this PCB just nicely sitting there in the line. And I'm just rotating it around a bit because I will need to figure out how it goes in. And judging by where the trigger button is, it's actually that way. So we can push it in there, let it sit on that spring a little bit. And there are two little tiny alignment dots which it's just about sitting on. Just got to get the yell can on now without everything moving around. Definitely a tricky situation. So we're kind of halfway there, and before I try to even clamp anything on, I'm just going to rotate it so I can see underneath it. Look around as I'm going along. We just want to make sure, again, that PCB is sitting nice and flat in there where it should be. And now I'm just bending it slightly, bending out that bit so it will go around the edge and grab on where we need it to grab. Look, that is, it is there. I haven't snapped it all back in place properly, but we can hear fire buttons making its noises and certainly the joystick appears to be moving exactly as you'd want so I think it is time to start bending everything back in I think this is probably the trickiest part really if you've lost the spring it will be tricky if it's lose the metal and when I mean spring I mean the spring and the metal rather than losing the actual spring inside because yeah if you've lost that you definitely are in trouble And I'm just going to gently work my way around it with the back of this tool. And you can see you can bend it over nicely again. Yeah, I think that's that. 
So all that's left is you pop that back in your Joy-Con and see if it works. Um, which I'm not going to do because I'm far too lazy for that. But I will do one thing and that's just compare it. And yeah, I think it, it's fine. It feels fine. Sounds fine. Probably done. There you go. You try it if you've got nothing to lose with a really terribly drifty Joy-Con and then you report back because I want to hear what you say. But I think that's a good fix. Now, in answer though to the previous question, Luke, can you clean them out without dismantling it? I would argue yes. So, for example, for this Joy-Con, a uh, little joystick, if you're going to try this, yeah, I would say fill a thimbleful or a capful full of IPA. Find one that it's going to sit into nicely, like that. I would say pour in a bunch. And remember, you're going to have to let it dry when you're done with this, but just sit it in like that for a little while. You can see it's having a little jacuzzi. And I would work it. And in fact, through spinning it around like that, I can already see IPA starting to work its way out of the top. So it's definitely getting in among its gubbins. And once you've done that, just giving it some work, clicking, shaking, baking, set it up on its corner to give it some nice little dinks, and let it sit there, and just let everything run out. I think that'll probably just do the trick and give it a new lease of life. But yeah, make sure you work it a bit too. You want to make sure that any crud that was on there, you're swiping off, wiping off, and it collectively you know, draining down to a corner out of the way where it's nice and safe won't get in your way and then pop that right in I mean again I'm not even sure how long you need to wait probably not too long I'd, I would wager that's probably already a vast improvement of what it was but I can tell you from top down without taking this out there's no way you're gonna get any cleaner in there because there is a little cap over the hole there that's designed to try to at least stop some of that grossness getting in there in the first place. There, I'm done.